Welcome to Apex Esports League. I'm JT, and tonight I'm bringing you round three of the Logitech G Supercars Championship for iRacing. So it is a five round series, so of course, this is the halfway point, and then the drivers are all competing for the Logitech G502 Lightspeed Wireless Gaming now. So, very exciting stuff. So, we saw last sorry for the session we've got 10 minutes practice then we have a 10 minute qualifying and then we have 40 minute race it is a standing start double file back restarts and then time progression is sorry time is one and then the weather conditions are partly cloudy so last week we saw blake urquhart take will maintain his lead in the championship with 242 sorry 240 points we have hayden sell following closely behind with 216 points last week at Oran park raceway we saw blake urquhart take pole position and then also took victory for the race with hayden sell showing some very quick pace setting the fastest lap of the race and of course, you can see the Logitech G502 Wireless Gaming Mouse. It is a spectacular prize that Logitech is offering for our drivers. So the one lucky winner will have this sent out to them courtesy of Logitech G Australia and New Zealand. So very exciting to be able to have that prize as an opportunity to our drivers. So we'll be jumping over into the track side in a moment drivers have just started up their practice session we did just have a few tech issues which required a restart so we we all back in and running in a moment so we'll just take a moment just to load up the screen got the best view Coming out of the pit exit. So of course, in the US of A for Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's a very nice, fast track. It's quite a fun track to drive around. So, a few drivers got some times on the boards as well. Hayden Sell getting straight into it with a 1 minute 18191. way down through the driver's list. So Sell did swap out car as well. You would have remembered him in the Commodore the last two rounds. So he swapped over into the Ford Mustang. So we don't usually allow drive sorry car changes. However for this series the V8 supercars oh he's just going to the pits he's gonna to have to bring that up quickly. Not sure if he was intending on finding pit lane. Or if that was just a misjudge of that corner. So over to our championship leader. He's even got his name up on the top of the car. The Urquhart. He's doing well after two race victories. Can he secure a third victory tonight? Well, we've just heard quite a hit. Someone was scraping some wall. Blake's come through 0.813 off of Hayden's practice time. That's so on to the oval section. Then heavy onto the brakes down to the chicanes. Very slippery section of the track. Those curbs do like to throw that car out quite wide. And then it is a little bit of a confusing track. As you do see the out of bounds area for the pit exit that you usually have when they do do the oval racing. So I'm sure yes, we've just seen Blake follow through doing the same as well and it's a very interesting pit exit as well. It is a very sharp left hand turn out onto the track. I'm sure who's in that MSR. So it's Neil McKenzie. So we do have 11 drivers tonight. If you are joining us for the stream, don't forget to jump in the chat, say hello. I can see the chat messages. So don't be shy. And that is the end of the practice session. So the drivers will now be all gearing up to head out 
for 10 minutes of qualifying. So I got 10 minutes to get a good time on the board ready for the race. I jump on for a lap. With Robbie Bradbury in the Ford Mustang. Slippery at the moment, those tyres are rather cool. It's a very tricky couple of corners, you'd be very easy with the throttle. Otherwise, it can end up to a big spin. Nice, very sharp turn into that apex. Power down out to the oval. And then shaving off a lot of speed to come down into the chicane. Into a sharp left, into the sharp right. Up over that kerb, you can see the car lifting the two wheels. Ooh, very slippery. Gets that under control. This is where we saw a few of the drivers down low in the corner. So that is if you are going to be going into getting another chicane along to the final straight. It's basically bouncing on two wheels to two wheels. Very cautious coming in here as cars are peeling out of the air pit exit. You do come around that blind concrete wall and there could be a car coming out so it could be some potential danger as we come onto needing to have the mandatory pit. So we did jump in a little bit later, it's a good fast corners. You can see the car sticking a little bit better now after it's got a little bit more temperature into those tyres. Let's see if there's any times on the board yet. So this will be the first time lap for Robbie. So Lachlan Hewitt isn't in the session. I think he is debuting with us tonight. He hasn't been in the other rounds. And if you join us for the stream, be sure to hit that follow button. We appreciate growing support for Apex Esports League. And there we are. And Kanga, thanks for hitting that follow button. Appreciate it. And if you do hit that follow button, you will get the notice up on this stream. So some appreciation for courtesy of following the Ooh, that's been a bit of a mistake for Stephen Banks. So in that same section where I was mentioning it was quite loose for Robbie as he was going past. So Tony Purcell is almost so in the MSR livery. So Neil McKenzie also running that same colour scheme as well. Aaron McGuire in the Holden Commodore. First time's coming through now. Blake Urquhart getting a 119.097. Mark Horton coming through for 1.598. Right Sebastian Van Delsa losing some points in the incident last week. So we having Bit of a back marker, some blocking traffic when there was a bit of a crossover. So there was a 30 point penalty that was applied to him post race. So he's managed to drop him back just a little bit in the championships. He's currently sitting ninth. Eight, sorry, 66 points. So Jake Bottom is just ahead of him. to get through it. And Aaron Thompson with the clutch kickers. Livery, I'm pretty sure Mark Horton's got the team livery for area as well. So a couple of team paints out there which is good to see. If you join us for the stream down below depending on the version you are checking it out on. I'm not sure if it applies for mobile version, but there is some sound effects controls. So you can play a variety of sound effects across the stream. So you can cheer and applaud, boo, 
and have some other fun sound effects as the race goes on to have some fun playing with those and make the stream just as much yours as it is for us. And of course our social media links down below as well. Hayden's just bringing that car in. Lachlan is out on the track. So that's now three drivers in the MSR. See some teams coming across and getting involved into the racing. If you're ever keen to get involved in our races, we do do iRacing Monday night, 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. We also do Project Cars too on Thursday nights. A little bit slippery as he hits that curb that bounced that car across, losing that rear traction. And Hayden Sell coming through with a pole setting time of 1.18. Hayden showing some very quick pace. He was showing some very strong, fast pace in the race last week. And then he did have quite an extended pit stop. So it was almost about 10 to 20 seconds, I think it was, that ended up adding to his pit stop time, which potentially could have had him sitting right door to door with Blake Urquhart by the end of the race. So hopefully a little bit better luck for him this time around. Oh, we checked out. So let's give us up. Steven Banks. Has he got a time on the board? Yeah, I don't think he has got a time on the board. No, not yet. So need to get that precious lap through. There's only three minutes remaining. Currently it's two Fords up the front, followed by Mark in the Holden Commodore. Aaron Thompson in the clutch kicker's car. So follow, closely following his teammate Mark Horton. Mark's in third, with Aaron currently in fourth. Remaining. So it's enough time to get a couple more laps through. Don't forget for our social media links down below if you have not checked them out yet. Our Facebook page is where we put all our results, standings and incident reports. So the races are shorted afterwards. Checking for any at fault driver incidents that may require a penalty incident. And then all our reports do get posted after the standings get put up so you can follow just how your favourite drivers are going throughout the championship. And then any of the outcomes from incidents that we may see in the course of the race. We've got someone else just joined in late, so Daniel Games must just still be loading at the moment. If he can have a very solid result tonight, he's going to be in a very strong position to be able to be the one to take home that fantastic prize courtesy of our sponsor Logitech G. That is that Logitech G502 light speed wireless gaming mouse, so it is worth a nice amount of cash, so it's a fantastic prize for us to be able to be giving out. Sure beats the coffee mugs and stubby coolers I'm usually giving out to our drivers. And if you want to catch any of the action of our previous races, all our previous championships over the last 12 months, you're all saved onto our YouTube channel. So that is the bit.ly slash Apex Esports League. So you can jump over to there and subscribe. That would be appreciated as well. Since we don't have a large amount of subscribers yet for that. That is why we have that strange address for our YouTube, so it's not anything dodgy. It's just to shorten it, otherwise it would be taking up the length of the screen and not an easy one to remember. Sebastian doing not too bad. Is he got a time on the board, I don't think, for qualifying. This could be interesting, there's only five seconds remaining. Daniel Games has just got in, so he's in the Red Bull Commodore. There we 
have conclusion for the qualifying. Oh, narrowly voids. He's not going to have a chance to really get a lap time in, so we're probably going to be seeing the new games qualify down the back. So he's not new to Apex Esports League, he's been in for our other series. But it will be first time he's joined us for broadcast on the iRacing. So we've been doing iRacing for a little while, but I'm usually in behind the steering wheel and driving around and deciding to get this all actually covered for all our viewers to check out all the action that goes on on the Monday nights with our iRacing. It's just points so that would have been a lovely time to try and have a shot and even score that that mouse myself. But I don't think it would have had anywhere near the pace that we've been seeing our top runners pulling. So Hayden Sell and Blake Urquhart has been putting on quite a good show. They've been pretty similar pace. Some great battles going on between the two. Taren's brought that car in. That's it for him. Sebastian will have time to wrap up this lap. So he's come through qualifying sixth. Drivers will be bringing those cars in now, getting ready to hit the grids. So we have Hayden Cell qualifying in pole. Mark Horton taking the second quickest time. Robbie Bradbury takes third. Lachlan Hewitt in fourth. Blake Urquhart qualifying in fifth, so not doing as strong. And then we have Tony Vassellis in seventh, Aaron Maguire in eighth, Sebastian Sartz in ninth, Neil McKenzie in twelfth, sorry, tenth, forget that wrong, Aaron Thompson in eleventh, and Daniel Gomes. Not getting that time on the board, so coming in twelfth position. Starting up front, he's only just tightly following in behind for the championship. It's only 24 points that he is behind. A win here would definitely give him a good opportunity, especially if Blake doesn't get a good start. Oh, sorry, good finish. Green flag, green flag. There we go, green away. It's a pretty good start for Hayden. Also for Blake, he's gotten away. Looks like someone may have actually not started. They may have jump started from the grid. Sorry, from the pits. We'll have to see. And just if they don't make the start of the race, you do start from the pits. So you do have to hit that ready button. But Hayden is getting away pretty quickly. So he's starting to put a good little lead over Blake Urquhart. So he's got a gap of about 0.4 to 0.5. He's getting away pretty quick. Blake's going to have to try and do some very quick catching up and put some pressure down onto Hayden Cell. Sebastian Vandell is also looking to take Stephen Banks' position free away from him. He is coming in pretty tight. You can see just up ahead, Hayden still pulling away from Blake. He's still maintaining that gap for about 0.4. A little bit of spacing going on. Robbie Bradbury may have been a little bit of action going on down towards the back. It's almost side by side coming down into the chicanes. Neil McKenzie just tucks in right behind Mark Horton. A little bit of a lock up from Aaron. Oh no, no, it's been a golf. And who is that? Is that Lachlan? He's maybe a spin off. Not sure who that was. I think it was Neil McKenzie. Didn't quite navigate that first chicane. Hayden really bouncing that car straight through. Curb to curb. Left side to right, absolutely thrashing this Mustang around Charlotte. He's put that lead out to 0.6 now. Blake is starting to fall behind pretty quickly. So over that curb, you can see him trying to hunt down. Hayden, Ooh, Hayden takes that very sharply. So Blake has a little bit of time to try and focus on hunting down Hayden. 
Stephen Banks is about 0.3 seconds, sorry, 3.1 seconds behind him, so they have gotten her away from the rest of the pack. He has started to bring that gap down just a little bit, it's down to 0 0.6, 0 0.5. If he can get a nice lift stream on here, a little bit of a Blitz of net code showing for Hayden. Hayden really using those curbs. He throws that car through. But I think that may have cost him a little bit of time. So Blake seems to have actually just caught back up. Hayden Sell has come through with the session's fastest lap. So he's come through for 118.720. So that is qualifying times. That would be with a much heavier fuel load than what he was running in the qualifying. So he's doing very well. Blake is still looking to close that gap in. It's at 0.784 now. Stephen Banks still has Sebastian Vandel. Not so much pressure now. He may have pulled away from Sebastian. A bit of spacing going down for the rest of our cars. It's Aaron Thompson it has Robbie Brabry looking to catch up behind him. Mark Horton, who also dropped a fair few positions, will be trying to look up catching up on team as well. Up over that kerb. It's a very nice looking car livery with the clutch kickers. He's off into the pits, not sure if he's getting repairs. Drivers do have the opportunity for fast repairs. He's set to unlimited, so if they do have a drastic accident, it's not going to be race ending for them. It just will be any critical damage, only requiring the amount of time to get a tow in, so at least they can get back out on track and their session isn't over, which is good. So we do just see a good amount of cars still out on the track and don't see it dwindle off as the incidents occur. Hayden is really not letting off. It's not making it easy for Blake to try and catch up. Very tight line coming in for his goes through a lot sharper than what we're seeing Blake take. That seems to be where he's pushing that gap out, so he pushes that out to now 0.8. You can see him throw this car through the curbs. He gets very tight to that wall. Look how close that was. Watch him as he hits this next chicane. As he launches this car between the curbs. He just gets very airborne as he hits this one. Up it goes towards that wall. Brilliant driving. He's pushed that lead out to a second now. Stephen Banks in third position, still keeping about the same distance between him and Sebastian. Sebastian looking to try and close in and have a cr crack at him. Okay, do Dewey put the race comms in, not during the race, but we do, we will be trialling it tonight, jumping over for a winner's interview. If it is, it manages to be Hayden to take victory. He does have to actually duck off over to an invitational race straight away, so we won't be able to interview him at the end of the race. We will be jumping in with whoever takes second place, if that is the case. So we'll be able to get their point of view during the course of it. But we may look at trying to jump on board and discuss with our drivers if they don't mind a little bit of the distraction as it goes on. Bit of spacing going on between Sebastian and Aaron Thompson now. And Aaron also has 16 seconds before sixth position with Robbie Brabry catches up to him. So it's only on lap four currently and a fair amount of space that could have been potentially an incident that has gone on that we have missed. Can't see any of the events details for some contact being made, so hopefully it was a pretty good clean start to the race. Sneels back out on track. It's coming in 
12th position. So he's a lap down. Mark Horton also dropping back a fair bit as well, so he may have taken some damage. Aaron has a fair bit of time between him and Mark Horton. Tony Vassellis, however, is catching up on Lachlan Hewitt. He's looking to take on his teammate. They're closing in very quickly. Their fastest lap's about pretty on par. They're doing 123s. Looks like he's going to be having a crack for a go at taking away his teammate's position. If he can get a nice follow on through here. You can see these guys taking a much wider line around that corner compared to what we're seeing Hayden taking. Gets around him brilliantly. It's probably a little bit of teammate courtesy as well. Not contesting that position too much. Oh, and Daniel Gomes has taken some big damage. He has lost the bonnet to that Commodore. And over to our race leaders. Hayden Sell still holding that gap. And he's teetering around the point 8.9. Point he did get that out to second. Hayden a little bit wider around that corner. Where well, this time we saw Blake following very differently. A bit of an echo going on for Hayden. So that could potentially be a factor that Blake will have to consider if he is going to attempt to being able to get around. Really closes that gap in towards the last sector. Slightly different exit lines that Hayden has been taking coming back out onto the oval section in the hopes that he can have his opponent take the usual line and then he'd be able to instantly break that slipstream advantage. Sebastian really closing in on Stephen Banks. He's been quietly picking away at him. Ooh, a little bit slippery. He goes for that inside line. He's going to have to move it back over for all these corners. Some strong. Very nice trail break down him through there. He showed a lot more pace than Stephen Banks. Gonna have to get a nice flow through on this corner, nice and tight. Brilliantly done, Stephen. Wandering a little bit around. Breaks that slipstream, you see Stephen start to pull away. Pull right up, I think that was a little bit of a touch. As you can see, here's really closing in that little bit of a nudge just cost him some time though at least it didn't put him into a spin a little bit of a lock you could see from Sam Banks oh a very nice line and here comes Sebastian making the pass on turn one but Stephen's not giving it to him that easy Sebastian dominates the track position Forcing Stephen to have to yield that away. For some reason we're not getting Stephen actually have his initials show up on the screen. That's quite interesting. And he's even showing in our ticker. So now Sebastian just needs to start to pull away. So a brilliant pass by Sebastian. That gap has really closed in on Hayden. Blake is really starting to gauge him to try and get around. If Hayden was, definitely wants to have a shot at winning this Logitech prize, he definitely needs to take victory here tonight. Oh, really bounces that car up. That was probably a little bit too much curb. That's going to definitely cost him some time. Taking too much advantage of it. So that gap has dropped down to 0.651 now. 
Hayden could be in some trouble. So we've got 20 set, just under 28 minutes remaining. Drivers will probably be looking to pit in the next five to six minutes. So the fuel loads are capped to 47%. Forcing the drivers to have to pit in to be able to get through the race. So we get the mandatory pit effect. Let's see who's battling out at the moment. Aaron Maguire is starting to close in on Lachlan Hewitt. Aaron Thompson also starting to close that gap in slightly on Stephen Banks. So a couple of seconds and he could be on the tail of Stephen. Looking to take on for position four. Now Dave Lachlan Hewitt. Doing pretty well, they're currently in seventh position. He's got Aaron Maguire quickly hunting him down. Getting his previous lap. Fastest lap for Aaron Maguire is a 122.5. Fastest lap for Lachlan is a 123.1. So we have had three drivers pit. Mark Horton, Tony Vasellis, and Daniel Games all having two pit. Hayden still doing well to keep Blake at bay. Oh, there's some wall contact. That's going to be hurting him. Didn't lose too much speed. I don't think it'll be too much damage. It was only a minor scrape. See the paintwork's been taken off on the side of his cell racing car. Both taking very sharp lines for it. A little bit of slip as that car starts to get traction down on the rear. Almost a lot, a very nice corner. Hayden shows a lot more quicker pace down through turn one. Much wider line than what Blake was doing. Now race leaders have now put 16.2 seconds over third position. These guys are in a league of their own at the moment. Flying out ahead, only on lap 11. It's only just coming up to the halfway point now. A few more laps and then we will, we have had Daniel Gomes retire. Some significant damage, a little bit of smoke residual from possibly a lock. I'm not sure if maybe a car had actually carked it. I think that may have. I just don't know if that came through on the stream. I did hear a noise and sound like a blown engine. Not sure who's in the pits there currently. Mackenzie or Lachlan. MSR car. It's trying to stay stuck on these guys. Oh, that's a wall contact for Hayden. That's going to be a big opportunity for Blake. That's a couple of hits now to that car. It's definitely going to be showing some signs of aero damage. Blake's going to be trying to look at getting around this lap for sure. Maybe crab walking just a little bit, but still pulls away fairly quickly from Blake. And then he blinks out to some net code. Blake going to have to really consider just where he's going to be, what line he's actually on when he goes to pass, or a little bit of steering correction. That gap's pulled back out, so he was very tight before, so it's now led up to point three gap again. Time 
whilst he puts some wall contact in as he bounces over into the wall. Wall contact again. Hayden's starting to make a few errors. Could be some potential fatigue coming in, and if that car isn't quite handling how it should be after taking a couple of wall scrapes, he may start to consider bringing that car in for a pit stop now. Get the car back out into the field with it being top notch again. The car could even start being a little bit flighty as it gets the, near the empty side for fuel. Especially with how Hayden's been driving this car, he really uses those curbs, he flies that car through. And as the car starts to get lighter, it's going to bounce a lot further. Ooh, net codes out, he blinks back out. Blake went to take a line. He's very lucky. Hayden was actually in that spot. That could have potentially been a net code incident. They are side by side as they come down into the final chicane. There's not going to be much room. Blake dominates track position. He now owns it. Tucks him in. Forces that yield. This is some fantastic racing. And then Hayden's going to be having the inside line coming down to turn one. He nudges in. Owns that track position, but Blake still pulls away. Blake moves over to block that line. Ooh, a little bit slippery for two of them. They are really pushing these cars. starting to fall back a little bit so good scrape on the side of Blake's car as well these guys will probably be racing in the pits most likely they're getting very light and they've got some back markers coming up so they're going to have to start making their way through traffic that could be another good time to consider bringing the cars into the pits do they decide to stay on and navigate some of the traffic Get in, take that fuel, a little bit of a repair, and then get back out and then be well enough space between any traffic that they must contend with. Hayden really falling back now. Sebastian Van Dell, fair way between him and Hayden, so he's currently 19 seconds away from our leaders. Stephen Banks has dropped back a fair bit, so Aaron Thompson is up in fourth position and closing down on a back marker as well. So Robbie Bradbury's up into fifth position. Stephen Banks is just under six seconds away from Robbie Bradbury. And he's got plenty of time between him and Aaron Maguire. And him and Mark Horton. Well spaced as well. Mark's got 32 seconds before Neil McKenzie catches up to him. Tony Vassell is currently in 10th position. Heading to Pitts is probably getting that fuel loading now. Payton's starting to really drop away. I think he probably needs to get that car into the pits. So they've gotten around back marker Aaron Maguire. So they managed to get around a few other back markers. So they've got around Mark, Neil, Tony, and Lachlan probably whilst they were in pits. I think they've all been to the pits. Not everyone except for Neil. So Tony's been in the pits two times. Yes, so there goes Hayden into the pits. I think that is very called for. need to try and put down as much better lap times now try and further that lead out so I'm just wondering just how long the pit time is for Hayden so average pit time has been about 13 to 16 seconds only just been for a quick fast repair however so it's now 
Hayden has gone out to about 30 seconds. Don't know if that is him fueling up. It's currently at 37.4 seconds. Sebastian Gavandil has moved up into position two. He will need to pit very shortly as well. He has actually already pit, so a 14.2 second pit time. That's not who I was wanting, so Hayden Sell just out now. So that was a one minute pit stop. That's the second longest pit stop. Drivers aren't aware of the report that they can use the fast repairs as well. That could be definitely a disadvantage to them. Blake having to back that car up a little bit as he pulled up on his pit stop. Sebastian Vardell now has the opportunity to take out into the lead. Not sure when it was that he did actually pit before. So he did have a 30 second gap to try and cover to get up to Blake. So Blake has a very quick pit stop. And here he is back out on track. Only a 21.5 second pit stop. So that's left 12 second gap between him and Sebastian Van Dell. It's Hayden having some bad luck with his pit. That was the case for him last week as well. It's a Sebastian Bank, sorry, Stephen Bank, should I say? Moved into position three. He has been in the pits. Aiden is blinking out a bit. I'm not sure if he's disconnected. He could potentially be detrimental for him. If that's the case. Yes, it may be the case. For Hayden. Don't forget if you are just joining us for the stream, be sure to hit that follow button. We appreciate the support. Let us know if you think Blake will be taking victory here. He's done a pretty good solid drive. He had a lot of work to try and get around Hayden's cell. Hayden was not letting it off easy. And I think he has disconnected. Fairly well spaced out now. Stephen Banks does have Robbie Bradbury. Looking to close that gap on him. They do have 10 seconds between the two. And Aaron Thompson is quickly closing in on Robbie. Contact for the sounds of things. Very nice line by Aaron. See him actually really closing in on Robbie. Like a wall very high, nearly puts himself into that wall. Quick. That must be Robbie heading into the pits. It was very narrowly avoided. You can see a little bit of smoke on screen. Some residual smoke from a tyre lockup heading into that chicane. Yes, Hayden has retired. Wall scrape there, I think, from Aaron. Let's see if there's some scrapage on that side. Oh no, so not in the chat. Hayden had a technical issue and he's had to actually close out of iRacing. So that was 
Unfortunately, he is having a spectacular race for a tech issue to actually put him out for the race. Hayden did lead for 17 laps. We're currently on, sorry, 11 laps. So we're currently on lap 20. So he led for majority of the race and it wasn't until he had to peel into the pits where it all went wrong for him. It's very sad to hear for Hayden. Hopefully some better luck for him in his next race that he's got to head over into after this race. So wish him all the best and then also for next week as well. Sebastian is starting to close that gap in on Blake. Best lap time is about two seconds difference in the last laps around. We had Blake set a 120 and then Sebastian set a 122.1. So still about two seconds off pace from Blake. So with 11 minutes remaining. No, Aaron, that is luck hasn't been on, on his side this series. much the same as the real deal as well. All things can possibly go wrong. Hopefully a bit more luck coming into the last two rounds for Hayden. Check out the rest of the field. So Stephen Banks currently sitting in third position. Behind. 15 seconds behind Stephen is Aaron Thompson. Drop down into fifth position from third. Sorry, from this one is right, is from third. After he went in for his pit. So we have had Stephen Banks, Aaron Thompson, and Sebastian all going and pit. So they should have enough fuel load to get through the remainder of the race. I think it was current back marker. It's Aaron McGuire. Let's try and catch up on Mark. So he's just been passed by Sebastian Van Del, but he's still keeping pretty good pace. And you have Tony Vasellis and Neil McKenzie battling it out for eighth position. Neil starting to close that in. Lap down from our race leader. Lachlan Hewitt, our debut tonight with Apex Esports League. Currently in 10th position. Let's see, well, it's a few laps down, but then after Hayden having to actually drop out for the session with those technical issues. Managed to recover the position away from Hayden after the point which he had to retire out. Leader Blake Urquhart flying out in front. He's managing to probably have a little bit of an easier drive out there. He hasn't had Hayden to try and get around. There's some great driving between the two. They are really pushing each other's pace. a very good chance that Hayden would have took victory for tonight's race with just how quick he was setting in the practice qualifying and the race as well. Sebastian getting a bit more back marker traffic coming up, so there's 8 minutes 20 remaining of the race. Sebastian coming up to some traffic again. for him and quickly tucks in as he has shown the blue flag. It's a little bit of lag going on for Sebastian. Like, leading a 
ahead of Sebastian by 23.2 seconds. It's Tony Vassell is still holding away from his teammate. Two seconds gap between him and Neil. So a fair bit of spacing going on throughout most of the field, except for these two guys who are starting to really rein in on each other. bit of spacing going on. Very tight line for Blake. Six minutes remaining. Blake would be feeling pretty confident at this point for a race victory. That's going to cement in a very good lead on the championship. was Hayden that was close competition to him for the championship so Hayden was in second for the championship after round two 216 points Blake was sitting with 240 points and then in third position is Sam was Sam Tucker with 184 points or tied 184 points with Robbie Bradbury Sam Tucker not in tonight session so also other drivers not making it is Jordan Cell, Jake Bonham, and Bruce Robinson briefly, I'm sure if it was for last week. We did have him for the opening round. Closing that gap in on Blake. It's five minutes remaining. It's a 20, almost 29 second gap between the two. And their current last lap pace is still around that two second mark. Seeing 120 is being set by Blake. We're seeing 118s being set by Hayden. So that was some very quick pace we saw him last week as also take the fastest lap points, not oh, sorry points, but fastest lap for the race. We have actually a slightly different points format for the championships for our iRacing in comparison to our Thursday night project cars 2 for PlayStation. So the drivers do receive points for qualifying and bonus points for fastest lap. So we didn't actually have that initially for the iRacing as it wasn't a possibility but iRacing has actually allowed all that so we may be looking at trying to mirror our champion points system. We usually run two races on the Thursday night series, but we just won the one race in I racing. So Blake Urquhart now gets around a couple of back markers. Pretty sure that was Neil and Tony. Actually getting around, I think that may be Lachlan Hewitt that he's just gotten around. Yes, so that's a back marker. It's a bit confusing with three MSR cars out on the track. Three minutes remaining now. Blake still leads the race. He's now pushed that gap out to 30.2 seconds and it is still climbing. Sebastian's got 10 seconds between him and Stephen Banks, so he's pretty safe. 
even just coming onto the oval section as Sebastian is nearing the end of the first section. So we should be pretty safe. With only a couple of minutes remaining. Thompson doing well in fourth position. He's got a little bit of a safety net as well. He's got 42 seconds before his team of... Oh no, he's got some issues going on. That was a fair bit of smoke. I'm not sure if that was a real lock-up. Did misjudge that corner. So we did hit that curb pretty hard. Looks like he may have even taken a bit of transmission damage as well. So a fair bit of smoke. See Mark drop down towards the back of the field after having a strong start to the race and to qualifying. Or he may be look, heading into the pits again by the looks of things. He's going to bring that car up in time so it doesn't serve a penalty. So he's already been in two times. It's definitely going to cost him a few of those positions now. It's Robert Babri will have an opportunity to reclaim a position away from Mark. So down he comes now. Just ahead of him is Sebastian. Sebastian already lapping these guys. So we have Robbie now move up into fifth position. Oh, it's just been dropped in release. He's got Aaron Maguire starting to close in. Oh, some contact. Not sure who that was. Was that Nip or was that Tony? No, it was Lachlan, so it's a back marker. So misjudged that, that could have potentially been a big incident. So we'll have a look to see what went on with Lachlan. Not that he had cheeks, he was a back marker. Fifteen seconds remaining, so we'll be coming up to the last lap. It is a last lap, white flag shown. Blake is very set to be able to take the top of the podium. He's got a 36 second lead over position two. So now to jump on and interview Blake at the end. So be sure to stay tuned as we head into the results after the conclusion of the race. Nearly 37 seconds. Last corners coming through. Turn 15 and 16. Brilliant line. Check and flag. Well done to Blake taking top of the podium. Before they go find some section of track to do some burnouts. Time to be able to get through, get this last lap done. In which case, you can hear some burnouts going on from Blake. Check a flag for Sebastian. Congratulations. Not too far behind was Stephen Banks. Crosses the line. I think that was Robbie Bradbury as well. Yes, it's Aaron Thompson bringing it up into fourth position. Bradbury was a lap back. Congratulations, Aaron. He's pretty set here. Crosses the line in fourth position. Bradbury has crossed in fifth. Aaron Maguire also finished in sixth. <laughs> he puts it into the wall. Mark pulls it over in seventh. 
I think did just lose right at the end. So Mark's dropped into eighth. So if you have dropped out, so there we have the conclusion of round three. So we'll bring up our results. And there we have, after 30 laps around Charlotte, we have Blake Urquhart take victory, followed by Sebastian Van Dill in position two. Siva Bakes takes third, followed by Aaron Thompson, Robbie Bradbury, Aaron Maguire, Mark Horton two, Neil McKenzie three, Tony Vercellis, Lachlan Hewitt, so debuting in 10th position, well done to him. And then Hayden Sell and Daniel Gomes both having to retire out, so technical issues going on for Hayden. And then early on, Daniel did actually have to retire out quite early, I think only in nine laps, yes, so 21 laps down. So we'll jump over just momentarily and see if we can get our winning driver on the line for an interview. So it is exciting. We have not been able to actually do this yet, so it will be quite exciting to try and do that. Just a moment. And Blake, do we have you? Hey buddy, how you going? Yeah, good. Congratulations on the win. Cheers, mate. So it's a very strong race in the end. It was a lot of hard work trying to chase down Hayden early on. He led for a good portion of the race. How'd you go trying to track him down? Oh, mate, I, I looked at the times at qualifying, to be honest, and I was like, yeah, he's got this. And, um, yeah, when um, I think it was 20, oh, 19 laps it was, we were pushing pretty hard, you know, we were, oh, 30 to 20 seconds in front of third. And um, when... Um, oh, you know, quite honest with you, we, I don't know about him, but I was sweating off. Um, but he did his pit stop, and um, I was like, I'll come in next pit stop. Um, as I pitted, he was still in the pit, so um, I don't know what happened. Um, I don't know if he had a wheel drama or... Yeah, so in the um, chat, we did have um, them mentioning that he having some technical issues, and then he actually had to exit out of the game, so that was very unfortunate for him not being able to get out, so it was a very lengthy t pit stop, so he was in there for about a minute before we ended up actually having to retire out. Oh, really? Uh, well, let's do the grudge to um, Hayden. He was, um, you know, I was struggling to keep up with him, but, um, yeah, he should have won it, but um, it is what it is, and, yeah, cheers again, man. Yep, no worries. Great to talk to you. And um, good on those victory burnouts at the end as well. Cheers, buddy. So there we have the conclusion for round three. And of course, that was Blake Urquhart just discussing how the race went on. So hopefully that all sounded lovely as we went through for our first ever driver interview live for Apex Esports League. So of course, we have for next week is Sukuba Circuit. It is going to be a very trialing track with the V8 supercars around there. A lot of off camber corners and it's going to be some very tight action. So be sure if you haven't done so yet, hit that follow button so you can be notified when we do go live we do also have our project cars 2 v8 supercars championship on thursday night so you can catch the action from our console drivers in our v8s on thursday same time 7 30 p.m australian eastern standard time so thanks for joining us tonight and hopefully we get to see you trackside next week